Oh, the wretched white smoke. I've been having problems with my diesel heater. And the latest issue is that I can't get it to start. Well, it'll start, but it won't start blowing hot air. Like, it won't start combusting. It just does this white smoke. I'm well, not sure what that means. Air 10. And so I'd just like to start off by saying I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm learning as much as I can as I go through this experience. And so yeah, let's get into the issues here. The first issue is with the fuel tank. This thing has been a pain in the butt. Uh, it's not UV rated, so I don't know. I, I shouldn't expect too much of it, but the seams tend to crack. And so it cracked up here. I ended up painting it black with some Flex Seal. And uh, it's still cracked at the top there. And so, you know, piece of duct tape for now. Uh, I will have to end up ordering, you know, a better tank, a better fuel system, or maybe have something that's deployable. I'm not sure yet. The other issue is I'm not sure what the protocols are for summer storage. What I ended up doing over the summer is I just left it, put a little bit of fuel stabilizer in it, and just kind of forgot about it. But I can see that the diesel kind of gummed up in places, and I'm assuming this is the reason why I'm having all these issues with the white smoke, ignition failures, and all that. And so I'm not really sure what the protocols are, like if I should just be disconnecting the fuel line, leaving it, uh, you know, and just putting a fresh tank of fuel every winter or something, or every fall. Um, again, I'm not sure. It's my first go at it. And then a few other things that have changed. As you can see, a lot of people had commented on my install video about it being too about my exhaust being too close to the plywood, and that was a good catch on their part. I actually noticed that the plywood around my floor here was starting to char up, is all kind of turning black. Uh, I took a temperature gun to this exhaust pipe. It was really stinking hot, like really hot. And so what I ended up doing is put a low sleeve, made a low aluminum sleeve around there. And that seemed to help. I wanted to wrap it with exhaust tape and stuff, but at the time I didn't take anything apart, but it looks like I'm gonna have to take all this apart anyways and reinstall it. So I'm gonna do that properly the second time. And the other thing is this exhaust pipe. You can see it's already really corroded. Uh, I ended up drilling a little hole here to act as a drain because it's kind of a low spot, as you can see. Um, I just did that now. I'm not sure, it hasn't helped with anything, so I'm not sure if it was really worth it or not. And one of the issues I've been having too is that I think excessive fuel has been getting into the system and then burning in the exhaust, which is why the exhaust has been getting so hot. And it's actually shooting flames out of the exhaust, you know, which is cool for like a sports car and stuff, but not really cool for, you know, my cargo trailers. So I'm going to dig into this issue here, try to figure this out, what's going on with this system. If I had to give a recommendation, let's say, you know, out of five, I'd give this like a 2.5 star rating. Um, you know, I kind of took a risk going with the cheaper knockoff Amazon unit um, and everyone that I know that has the name brand unit has had no issues with their their setup, like absolutely nothing. It worked really good out of the box, I'll be honest. Uh, I got, you know, the whole, I got the whole use of the winter. As soon as it started getting warmer and I was not using it as much, that's when I started having issues. I've owned this thing for less than a year, I'm going to say 10 months. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's already causing problems. And if I'm being really honest, I kind of wish I ended up going with like a vented propane uh, heating system or something else. Um, just because, you know, the diesel fuel is an extra fuel I have to bring with me. It's not, I don't have anything else using diesel. So when I'm not using this thing, I just have fuel sitting around that's being unburnt and going bad. Um, and if it was propane, for example, then, you know, I could have hooked up to a grill or something as well, like multi-use that way. So, and so I'm not bashing diesel heaters. They work really good when they do work, but, uh, for some reason, these little cheaper units, again, I'm not an expert, but, uh, when these tend to not work, they're just very finicky and kind of a pain in the butt. You know, I don't want to be dealing with this right now. I just kind of want to be enjoying the trailer. And of course, there's always maintenance and care with things. And then that's the whole part of the other issue is that I kind of put this thing in an area where it's hard to maintenance and take apart and all that. So uh, I'm going to dig into this thing here and let's see if I can get this thing back up and running. Note to self. When installing one of these things, make it a little bit more accessible. Managed to get all the screws, the four screws holding the bracket plate down out. Um, the two in the back there were a little tricky. I had to use like a extension bit with a bit on a bit. So it's, it's now loose. I just gotta unhook the heat pipe somehow, which is buried in there. And then uh, I gotta go underneath and disconnect stuff and then I can pull the unit out.
yeah so there's the exhaust and same thing the inside of it is really black and there's bunch of carbon build up inside that exhaust pipe so um, these uh, upgraded hose clamps survived really well they look good the, uh, the brackets though these little things these came with the the unit they're just rotted out like crazy like they're already all rusted and everything and so is this exhaust pipe this exhaust pipe seen better days and so inside I have it disconnected from the uh, the wall here the wall vent and then everything is unconnected so I should be able to just lift this thing out okay that's the unit out wow that's really scary look at that look at that burn look at all those burn marks on the plywood from that exhaust pipe so uh, I definitely amend my install video don't cut your hole that small that's uh that's really sketchy. So just a visual inspection on the unit. Um, you know, it looks basically the same as how when I installed it. One big difference is the exhaust pipe. You can just see how black and sooty it is. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna pick it up there, but I can see like chunks of carbon build up in there. And um, I'm gonna suspect that's the reason why this thing isn't running right. So I'm gonna take this apart and see if I can clean it and get this thing back up and running. As far as this unit thing goes, I'm guessing I have to take off this whole front flange here. It should be fun. This is obviously the fuel inlet here. It comes up, goes into the unit there, and then there's the I don't know if this is the glow plug or the igniter or something, but see the wires going to that on top. And if I reveal the plastic up, that looks to be all right. Control panel off. the motherboard detached I guess the next thing to do is just uh, it looks like there's four allen bolts two up here two down there 
and then screw that and then I'm guessing the whole front air intake portion comes apart and um, hopefully there's no gasket that I have to get a new one or something I don't know again I'm kind of learning as I go with this I've never watched anyone take these things apart um, this is my first kind of go at it so kind of looks like a supercharger. Okay. <clears throat> Front shaft came out. So this is just the piece that holds the fan, brings the air in. That all looks good. the gasket. The gasket looks good. Mm -hmm. A little glow plug. And that looks alright. I mean, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be looking for, but it looks fine to me visually. Okay, Let's try not to lose all of our screws here. So far, I've taken apart the front fan shroud thing. It has a little gasket with it, and then I undid the glow plug or igniter. I'm not sure exactly what this is. It looks like a glow plug. Um, so now there's four other screws in here that I guess I'm going to try and undo and see I think this is the combustion chamber inside here so I'm going to take that apart and see how that looks like and I'm going to keep these ones oh these ones are different That one was loose, wow. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh my god, yeah look at this. No wonder this thing doesn't run right. Holy crap. Okay, so there's another gasket in here. I'm gonna make sure I take that out. Um, yeah, this thing is full of soot and other junk, so I'm gonna, definitely I'm gonna clean this out. I feel like this is a big problem here. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I have everything taken apart here. Very simple system actually, um, not very complicated. You know, I don't really know what I'm doing and uh, I've managed to take this thing apart. Uh, but yeah, taking things apart is the easy part. Putting things back together, that's the hard part. You can see how bad and how full of junk this thing is. Um, inside the combustion chamber too, it's just full of stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give that a good clean. I have some throttle cleaner, sensor cleaner, throttle body cleaner, so that should work fine to clean this stuff and uh, then I'll get it back together and then I should be able to put it back in the trailer and uh, get this thing back up and running again.
parts here. Um, I cleaned it best I could inside the combustion chamber and inside this fuel inlet thingy. Yeah, this was filled with soot and carbon buildup. Um, so I cleaned it all out, gonna put it back together. Okay, so the unit's all back together now. Um, it's a relatively simple process. It's pretty simple to take this thing apart and clean it and whatnot, so it's not that bad. I know in an earlier clip I said I was going to order a plate with a turret flange, and essentially what it is, it's that it has a round uh, flange, kind of like this, but you know, in metal, uh, that sticks through the floor and avoids, you know, that exhaust burning the edges of your floor. Now, I can't find any of those online at a reasonable price or that'll be here in a timely manner. Some of the things here in Canada are a little iffy when it comes to shipping from the States, uh, and I was only able to find stuff from the States. So, got a little creative. I ended up installing, I grabbed a leftover can of soup, cut that in half, and then I kinda made my own little flange here. Doesn't look the nicest, but uh, you're not gonna see it. What the plate and stuff is on top, like so. Right? And uh, I think this will protect the floor nice. It's metal, gives it sort of an edge condition. It's a nice little metal flange. I used some snips, some tin snips, and cut the edges and then folded them. And then I just used some finishing nails so it's nice and flat uh, going across the floor there. And uh, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead with that and uh, get this thing in there and see if it uh, fires back to life. All right, it appears that I have fixed the issue. No more smoke. I. Uh, made a little flange plate in there so that's not going to get hot in there anymore. And if you go inside... We're getting nice warm air now. Excellent. I was just, it's running as it should, so I guess it just needed a good cleaning. Well, I guess that wasn't so bad in the end. Okay, so the heater's doing the shutdown cycle now. I ran it for 20 minutes on high. That should be good. It definitely needed that good cleaning. And uh, yeah, so it seems to be running like brand new. I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. Um, I'm just kind of learning as I go, but a great resource for you guys if you're installing a diesel heater or thinking about installing a diesel heater and uh, need a maintenance to ours. There's a group on Facebook, Chinese diesel heater troubleshooting questions. Uh, great group, lots of people there that know a lot more than I do. And yeah, so be sure to check them out if you need any help with your diesel heater install. Cool, thanks for watching, stay tuned.